Bye. 
sing it as a declaration of faith this morning. Worship is your warfare this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands all over the place. Come on, as a sign of surrender, as a declaration of faith that God is fighting for you. God is fighting every battle for you. God is moving on your behalf. Come on. Would you just lift your hand as a sign of surrender to him? I'm reminded this morning about the Israelites, and we sang about it just a few moments ago, about when they were in the valley, and the Red Sea was in front of them, and the Egyptian army was behind them. And they cried out to the Lord, and Moses encouraged them and said, The Lord is fighting for you. All you need to do is be still. The Lord is fighting for you. I just want to encourage you. Maybe you feel like you are facing an impossible situation. Maybe you feel like there's an enemy all around you, right? The world is caving in on you. I want to encourage you this morning. God is fighting for you. God is fighting your battles. All you need to do is worship. All you need to do is fix your eyes on him. He is your helper. He is your healer. He is your way maker. So come on, can you just lift your hands as a sign of surrender? Come on, can you just praise him all over this place? He is worthy. He is working things out. He is moving on your behalf. He is moving in your family, even if you don't see it, even if you don't feel like it. He is moving on your behalf. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen it in my own family. I've seen it in my own family when the toxer said, there's nothing left, but my God is a supernatural God. He is not bound by natural limitations, and God made a way in my family, and I believe that for you this morning. He is making a way for you and your family. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is fighting for you. God is fighting for you. Take your eyes off your situation and just fix your eyes on him. He's moving in your life. He's moving in your family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for that reminder this morning, God, that you are moving, that you are making a way where there seems to be no way. God, when we're facing an impossible situation, we don't have to be afraid, but we can have faith, God. Because the same God that made a way through the Red Sea is the same God that fights for us. And we thank you for that reminder this morning. And I pray, God, for a fresh faith to fall on every single heart in this room today. God, I pray that you would move upon every family, upon every life in the name of Jesus. That you would come and you would have your way. We open up our hearts to you, God, and we just say we are open. Come and move. God, come and heal. God, come and make a way and only the way, God, that you can do. We give you all the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, come on, one more shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated this morning. It's a great day to be in God's house. Amen. And I'm telling you, God's not done because Pastor Brian's preaching about miracles today. So I have a faith and an expectation Amen. God's going to do something great in our service. Well, I want to take a moment and I want to welcome all of our first time and returning guests. Generation Church, can we make our guests feel welcome this morning? We're so glad that you would choose to worship with us today. We want to welcome you and greet you this morning. We want to turn your attention. There's a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. We would love to connect with you. If you will fill out that contact section, take it to one of our pastors, take it to guest services. We have a gift bag full of goodies, including a Chick-fil-A gift card, just to say thank you so much for being with us this morning. But we want to welcome you to Generations Church today. 
We also have more information for all of our guests coming up in our video announcements, as well as all the ways to give some upcoming events. We got all of our Easter events coming up. So let's check out these video announcements. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kelsey, and here's a look at what's happening around Generations Church. We want to welcome all of you who are watching and attending our service today. If you are a first time a returning guest, we are so glad you are here. At Generations Church, we believe in community and would love to connect with you. If this is your first time with us, check out our Connect card or the Connect QR code located in the seat pocket in front of you. You can fill out the contact section and return it to our guest services desk in the foyer. We have a gift bag, including a Chick-fil-A gift card to say thank you for being our guest today. If this is your second or third visit, we ask that you complete a Connect card as well. Just write your name and check the returning guest box and return to the guest services desk or put in the drop box in the foyer. For everyone, we have a prayer section on the Connect card and invite you to share a prayer request with our pastors. You can also share your answered prayers with us. We love to celebrate with you what God is doing in your life. We also have a response section on our Connect card. If you would like to be baptized, become a member, join a Connect group, or join a serve team, you can fill it out and return it to guest services. If you filled out that you started a relationship with Jesus or that you would like more information on Next Steps, we encourage you to visit the Next Steps page on our website. You can do so by scanning the QR code in the seat pocket in front of you or visit the guest services desk for more information. At the end of service, if God has done something in your life, we would like to know about it. Fill out the response card and take it to one of our pastors or to the guest services desk where we will have more information for you. Good morning. Recently, I preached about tithing and giving and I encouraged you to see giving as an extension of your worship to God and to be generous to the needs of others as well. I believe in tithing and giving. I practice it personally and I've seen God's blessings on, over the course of my life in my finances. So if you've never been one to give to the Lord or to the church, I have a challenge for you. Why don't you try it for the next several months and see if you can notice God's help and his hand on your finances. This morning, we have several ways in which you can participate in giving. If you're here with us in person, the ushers are here to serve you, and you can use the drop box in the foyer. For everyone, you can give online at our website at gctlh.org, on our Generations Church app, on your phone, or by scanning the give QR code on the seat back in front of you or in the foyer. If you're new to our church, you're never obligated to give in any way. You are our guest, and we're so glad that you're here. Again, I want to say thanks, Generations Church. You guys are great, and you're so faithful in your giving. God bless you. If you are 55 years of age or older, then join us on Thursday, March 14th for Teenagers. Once a month, Teenagers provides an opportunity for senior adults to fellowship with one another and share a meal. The program starts at 11 a.m. and the meal is served at noon. For more information, please visit the guest services desk in the foyer or check out our Teenagers page on our website. As we celebrate this Easter season, we want to invite you to join us on Good Friday, March 29th at 7 p.m. for an outdoor worship experience. We are excited to gather with families for a time of worship, communion, and much more. You won't want to miss this exciting experience. Childcare will be provided for a portion of the event. We just ask that you pre-register on our website events page. Save the date for Kids Camp 2024. This year, we will be attending West Florida Kids Camp, a real life camp in Mariana, Florida from June 19th through the 22nd. Kids Camp is for children in grades 2nd through 5th. The cost is $175 per child. A $50 deposit is due by Sunday, March 24th. You can begin making payment towards your child's registration fees on our church events page today. Hey GC Youth, this year we are headed to Columbus, Ohio for National Youth Conference 2024 and the National Fine Arts Festival. 
Mark your calendars for this week-long trip from August 4th through 10th as we attend this annual conference hosted by the Assemblies of God National Youth Ministries team. There will be great speakers, amazing fine arts performances, and so much more fun. The total cost for this trip is $480, which includes all registration, lodging, and three-day activity costs. A $100 deposit to reserve your spot on this trip are due no later than March 31st. See Pastor Brad if you have questions or need more details. For more information regarding Generation Church, its ministries, events, or other serving opportunities, feel free to visit our guest services desk in the foyer, follow us on social media, download our app, or visit our website at gcplh.org. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. There we go. Good morning. We are, uh, want you to witness and participate in a, a baby dedication this morning, a special time for these parents, for little Onara Oladin. Grandmother, I have not had the chance to meet you. Welcome. Welcome. We're so glad that you are, are here today and uh, take part in this, uh, take part in this moment. Uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to meet the Oladins, this is Olatunde, the, uh, the dad. He's a graduate student from FSU in physics and his wife, hallelujah. What a great name. You know, even when he's mad at her, when you, when you scream hallelujah, it just changes your, your heart. But uh, she is a uh, graduate student in biology from uh, Florida A&M University, one of our wonderful Nigerian families that the Lord has planted uh, into our church. And this is your mom. It's your, it's your mom. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Come and stay with us move here. So uh, we're, she's here for a period of time. So uh, Nigerian uh, baby dedication custom has a unique uh, uh, ceremony that goes in addition to this. It is the naming ceremony in which the name, a few weeks after the baby is born, the name is revealed to friends and family. And I had the opportunity to participate uh, a few months ago in the, in the naming ceremony. And uh, the paternal family and the maternal family, they all get to speak like prophetic names. They get to give names, joy, strength, whatever they feel in their hearts, uh, prophetically over the child and in the naming ceremony, the, the name is revealed, but also the, the names of the families are revealed as well. And it was just a great time. There was great food when it was over with. It was very spicy. I just want you to know that. Listen, I cannot hang with Nigerian spice. I just want you to know that. All right. But we had a great time and we prayed. Uh, we prayed over them uh, as well. And I've asked Samuel and I, Tunu, to, to join as they lead our African fellowship. And at the very end, as I pray a dedicatorial prayer, we are going to uh, pray in the native dialect of Yoruba from Nigeria and honor the heritage and the customs of our Nigerian friends. And also there may be some from Nigeria, some of the families who are watching or will watch. And we, we greet you uh, from Tallahassee, Florida, and we're so glad that you are, are joining us today. So when we come for this moment of dedication, it is an acknowledgement of the parents 
that God has placed a little gift uh, in their life. It's also acknowledgement from the parents that they need God's help in raising this child. It's the parents just asking at the very beginning of life for God's hand and favor upon the little child. And also, it's a releasing of the child into God's destiny and plan and purpose. We give them back to the Lord. Genesis 22 talks about a moment when Abraham laid his son on the altar, okay? Just gave him to the Lord, all right? Now, we live in a culture in America that we have helicopter parents, okay? Most of them are moms, okay? I just want to tell you that, all right? They hover. They try to eliminate every issue, every problem. They want to control every circumstance. And I want to say it's important to be an engaged parent, but there's just a time that you've got to give your kids over to God. There's going to be things that happen that we don't like. All right. But we lay them on the altar. We give them to the Lord. And that is what this act is today. When these parents just go, Lord, this is a gift that you've given us. And we totally give this child back to you. Becky. What a precious, divinely gifted blessing that's been entrusted in your hands with this precious baby. Psalms 127.3 says that um, children, they're God's best gift. Wow, moms and dads, children, they're God's best gift. Of all the billions of moms in the world, God chose to entrust this precious baby to you. What a blessing. What a blessing. But I'm just going to tell you, parenting is hard. It's exhausting, right? Right? It's hard. It's exhausting. Whether they're two months old, whether they're two years old, God bless you, or whether they're 22 years old, it's still, it's hard. It's exhausting. But there's no one more committed, more devoted, more invested, more fearful, more hopeful, more proud than you as her parents. I want to tell you that as exhaustion kicks in, it's okay. Every day is not going to be great. There are going to be days that you're tired. There's going to be days that baby doesn't sleep, doesn't eat, fussy, whatever, even as they grow. And that's okay. Every day may not be great, but I challenge you that there's something great in every day. And we just got to find that as parents. And that's so why I challenge you, Lord, with your help, we're going to find something great in every day. I would also just say that your generation's church family, while mom is here for a little while and you're away from all of your family that are watching with us online, um, your generation's church family, we're here to come beside you guys and um, partner with you in the raising and um, coming beside you as you raise this precious little baby. We're so excited for you. We are here for you and we love this precious little gift. Thanks for letting us be a part of your family today. Amen. So, Ola and hallelujah. I'm going to ask you some questions. And before the congregation, if you agree, just say amen. Do you promise before the Lord in this congregation that you will do your best to live a good, godly example before little Lenora? Do you promise before God in this congregation that you will commit your marriage to the Lord? Her first view of marriage is going to be from you. Do you promise before God in this congregation that you will raise her in the house of the Lord with the word of the Lord and in the presence of the Lord? Do you promise before God in this congregation that you will release her into the destiny and call that God may have? And if it takes her away from you to another side of the world to serve him, you will release her into that call. Amen. And do you promise at the first time that she wants to give her heart to the Lord, that you guys will pray with her and lead her to a saving faith in Jesus. Amen. Mama, would you give the baby to a Latande? Can we gather around him? Church, would you pray with us this morning? We want to lay hands upon this little child. Thank you, Lord Samuel, if you'll come here. 
So, Lord, we thank you for this little gift, little Lenora. And, Lord, this morning, this is a very biblical act that we do as we dedicate her and give her back to the Lord. And, Lord, you saw fit to take this family from Nigeria and bring them to Tallahassee. And, Lord, even in this moment, God, we pray that you're going to put your hand upon this little life. I pray for good health. I pray emotional health, well-being, physical health. I pray, Lord, that she's going to serve you, live for you with the presence of God, the Spirit of God in the midst of the people of God. She's going to be a young woman of your word, mighty young woman of the word. And, Lord, we pray. And we pray this prayer of dedication, we give it back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I will be praying in Yoruba um, and we'll bless the child. Uh, that's just, that'll be the summary of the prayer. Olorun and Lagbara Adupe Afokwe Funru Koyim. Adupe Turikwe Yen Yolorun. Adupe Lori Onwara. Adupe Fun Onwara Ti Ekba Gbejade. Adupe Turikwe Enyini Konyele She. Adupe Gbokwe Wa Oluwa agbadura fun ona ara bi oruko e se je ona ara agbadura o n gbogbo to ma sele ninu aye lati sin titi de igba ti o ma da ona ara ni gbogbo e o ma je fun Oluwa agbadura fun ona ara ibi ti oruko e ti won ti ma pe ibi giga 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 ni ni oruko Jesu oruko e won ni pe ni le ni ni le ejo oruko e won ni pe ni ogba e won oruko ona ara ibi giga giga ni won ti ma pe ni oruko Jesu Oluwa agbadura fun awon bi e agbara okun lati le to ni ona ti o to Oluwa fi fun oni oruko Jesu Oluwa agbadura fun owo ti won ni lo lati to ni ona to to Oluwa fi fun oni oruko Jesu Oluwa agbadura won gbogbo ti e ni ti e ti ti e ti se to fun ona ara lati 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 se fun yin Oluwa agbadura bo se ndagba o ma rin ninu ona yen ni oruko Jesu ko ni ya kuro ni ona iye agbara lati le kan le to ni ona iye Oluwa fi fun won ni oruko Jesu Christi Oluwa wa amen and everyone said amen would you congratulate this great family here we have a gift from our church god bless you hallelujah god bless you god bless you amen god bless you amen amen well, hey, it's great to have everyone here this morning. I appreciate you being here. I know it's spring break. There are many of you watching online from the beach and from Orlando. We greet you. We're bitter, but we greet you, all right? Uh, for those that are in service this morning, after church, we are serving steak and lobster for everyone that is here. Not really, not really. So just want you to know that. Glad to have you. Uh, hey, I want to uh, share a couple of announcements really quick. Do you realize Easter is three weeks away? Three weeks away from today. Hope you got your Easter card. We've got several things that are coming up. We have our egg hunt that's in two weeks. We moved it a week before uh, uh, Easter. So we want you to uh, invite your friends, family. Keep, a, keep mindful, mindful of that if you have kids. Also, we need uh, workers as well. So you can sign up on our uh, uh, events page as well. We have two kind of uh, one-hour shifts. And if you could help us, help us with that, we would appreciate it. The following Friday, we're doing a night of worship. It's going to be outdoors. Going to be in the back. We're going to do baptisms, communion, worship. You don't want to miss that. If you want to be baptized, good, uh, good Friday baptism, go to guest services. Say, I'd like to be baptized then. Easter Sunday, uh, two services, 8.30 and uh, 10 a.m. that morning. It's going to be a great day. We've got Frother's daughter that's coming to serve complimentary coffee. We're doing photos with family. We've got animals for the kids, and uh, so pr bring your preemptive Benadryl. I just want to tell you that. And then the following Friday is an Easter follow-up. We're doing a GC family cookout, hamburgers, hot dogs, Friday night. We're going to be doing some games, uh, just a, a follow-up to Easter. So we've got a lot of good things coming up for Easter. But also, we want to remind you, who's your one? 
Who's your one? Who's the one that you are inviting? Who's the one that you are bringing to uh, to Easter service? So, man, let God lay someone on your heart, or it may already be there. Go ahead, text them, call them, go. Hey, come to church with me on Sunday. I promise. I promise uh, you they'll they'll have a great time. So, just wanted to mention that. Uh, also, our connect groups meet tonight. You should have that on your uh, the the locations and and subjects. Dinner is at five thirty. The classes are at 615. Also, our Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday class uh, meets uh, as well. It's spring break. No Wednesday night service. Just want to mention that. Uh, also, uh, Walk for Life. Stacy Kunkel, raise your hand. We are solidly pro-life here, and one way that we uh, help is that we participate in the Walk for Life by the Women's Pregnancy Center. Stacy has a table in the foyer. If you would like to walk with her or sponsor her, then and see her after service if you have any questions about that. So we just wanted to uh, uh, make you aware of that. Uh, also, Carolyn Brock, I see you here this morning. Carolyn uh, said goodbye to her husband, Jim. He passed away just a few days ago. Hey, Carolyn, we just want you to know how much we love you. We love Jim. Uh, you are in our uh, thoughts and prayers, and we just want to express our condolences uh, to you. But we're glad that you're here. This funeral will be 12, uh, 12 on Thursday at Cully's on Riggins Road. But I saw you slip in. And because of that, we're, not, we're canceling teenagers. So I just wanted to mention that because it was on the uh, video announcement. Last thing, we've got a team that's leaving for Nicaragua, construction team on Sunday. If you're part of that team, would you stand? We're just going to do a quick prayer. Would you stand across the building? i got a few of those that are out this morning. Uh, we're going to be doing construction in two locations. So they've divided our team, and uh, so we've got an ambitious schedule uh, this coming week. So would you just take a moment, and let's just pray over this team as we kind of send them out today. So, Lord, we thank you for those that are... Uh, are feeling and sensing the call uh, to missions, and we ask, Lord, as we leave on Tuesday, we pray for safe travel. Lord, we pray that we would accomplish our task. We pray for good health. We pray, God, that these buildings are just going to bring legitimacy to these churches and what you're doing will just be magnified in their lives. And Lord, we pray for safe return and uh, we ask you to keep your hand on our team. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so uh, just wanted you to be aware of that. We'll, we'll be gone, we'll leave Tuesday and we'll come back the following Tuesday. If you have your Bibles today, uh, I'm, I'm starting a new series now. <clears throat> I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to do uh, a different kind of series. It's going to do four mini series throughout the year, okay? So uh, one's going to be on the teachings of Jesus. One's going to be on the meals that Jesus ate with people. He had some unusual encounters when he ate with people. One's going to be uh, about uh, individual encounters that Jesus has. And today I'm going to start with the miracles of Jesus. So these are going to be four kind of mini-series throughout the year that will focus on Jesus, different parts of Jesus' ministry. And uh, But today we're going to start uh, with the miracles of Jesus. And I'm going to be looking at Mark 2 and John 6. So the miracles of Jesus. So before I you know, get started with that, I want to talk about uh, miracles for a moment. And we're going to pray at the end for miracles. But what is a miracle? What is a miracle? Well, a miracle can only be appreciated if you understand the environment that the miracle works in. Miracles work within a scientific framework and context. And when you kind of get that, it kind of helps you appreciate what a, what a miracle is. So, so first of all, let's go Let's go science first. Let's go scientific law, natural law. What, what is that? All right, they are summaries based on observations that describe or predict a certain outcome. Okay, so there's certain natural laws, scientific laws that by study they have, you know, uh, uh, an observation, they predict uh, a certain outcome. Okay, and we live our life by these natural and scientific laws. One of them is the law of gravity. We kind of 
Get the law of gravity. We understand that. It is the invisible force that pulls certain objects together, and it is gravity that keeps us, you know, uh, uh, tethered here on the earth. Now, one day, there's going to be a trumpet that's going to mess up that whole theory there, okay? But for right now, it's, it's uh, you know, a, a scientific law. It's immutable. It's unchangeable, you know? Uh, so, like, every time I threw that into a light, and I almost had a problem. So, um, every, I'm not going to pitch it up anymore because it's very bright. So, uh, because the law of gravity is immutable, okay? It's, it's constant. What goes up comes down because it's a scientific law, okay? So, Gavin, I am going to throw this egg to you, okay? His mother just moved, okay? Now, Gavin... I don't want you to be nervous because people are watching and people are watching around the world, okay? All right? So I'm going to throw this egg to you, and either you get a free egg or those that clean the building will not be happy with you, all right? And Becky's got a towel just in case. So, all right, we're going to look at immutable laws. Are you ready? And Asatu just moved as well. You know, this is the splash zone over here. All right, are you ready? All right, here you go. You did it. You did it. You got the free egg, all right? So part of that immutable law that you saw that was violated at the very beginning was that there was thrust and acceleration that kind of, hey, this thing could go. But also the law of gravity is immutable. It's unchangeable. Because eventually it came, it came back down. So there are scientific and natural laws that are out there that, you know, uh, they've been studied and observed. And we can predict certain behaviors based on that. So a miracle can only be understood or appreciated in, the, in kind of that context. So what is, what is a miracle? It is a surprising event that is not understandable by natural or scientific laws and therefore is considered to be the work of a divine agent. So it's incomprehensible to natural law that there's some kind of violation to this. And even, and I got that just from the the Oxford Dictionary, Dictionary that says it's so unbelievable that a miracle would be attached back to a divine agent. It is a temporary violation of natural law and its understanding. A miracle is a temporary violation of of natural law. Now, there are two opposing thoughts when it comes to miracles, okay? One comes from science, of course, okay? All right, so science has, has kind of said, you know, miracles, there's no context for miracles, you know, at all. You know, David Hume, uh, wrote an essay in 1748 that started the, the anti-miracles voice when it comes to science. And he said, uh, insisting that the laws of, of nature, or excuse me, the laws of a natural world are incompatible with the supernatural. Okay? So science has kind of, you know, rendered a verdict when it comes to miracles that it's the law, natural law and scientific law that rules the day. Science doesn't necessarily believe in miracles because there is no way to quantify or explain the cause of the miracle. So science opposes miracles, all right? But also, there's part of the church that opposes miracles. There are people that believe, and they're called, it's called cessationism or cessationist, Okay? That they they believe that the view the 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 view the workings of the Holy Spirit healings tongues miracles as expressed in Acts ceased after the days of the apostles. They don't think that miracles exist for the day. They don't agree, disagree with what happened in the Book of Acts. They just don't think that it's for today. That we are in a then a different season and that miracles, as we believe, you know, aren't, aren't there. So you have two opposing thoughts. One comes from science. One comes from within the church, all right? But what does the Bible say about miracles? Now, I could go on for this forever, but I'm just going to give you two verses 
because you probably already believe that anyway, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, okay? So Acts 2.22, what does the Bible say about miracles? Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you, as you yourselves know. John 2 Now, while they were in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs, the miracles that he was performing and believed in his name. So, we just think there's all kinds of evidence out there that God does miraculous works in the days that we are living, okay? So, part of the the theology of miracles, and I just gave you several verses, but there are other things that I want to mention, all right? So, And and I want you to remember these, because I'm going to quiz you on these, okay? Miracles are meant to meet needs. They're meant, first and foremost, to meet needs. This is not a circus sideshow, miracles. I get irritated when I watch Christian television. I'm just not even going to go there, because I'll I'll get angry, okay? I just, miracles are to meet needs. Mark 2 said that there was a man that was paralyzed and never walked, and they They put him on a stretcher and they brought him to Jesus and they lowered him through through the roof. You know the story. Why did they do that? Because he had a need. Miracles initially are meant to meet needs. And and, and And a miracle can be many things. It can be that of sickness and disease. It can be those that have you know, financial hardship, God can meet that need. It can be a failing marriage. You might need, a, you know, internal change in your heart, life, some kind of, you know, overcome some kind of stronghold in your life. Miracles are meant to meet needs. Also, miracles were used to introduce God to the people of the Old Testament age and Jesus to the gospel uh, uh, and Jesus and the gospel to the people of the New Testament age. So number 1, they're meant to meet needs, but also there's a greater picture as well that can happen from a miracle. So they they lowered the man down through the roof and Jesus said, "Your sins are forgiven." Okay? And they said, wow, big deal that is, all right? And then he said, in Mark 2.10, he said, look at this. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, walked out in full view of them all. Okay, so he's using miracles to bring awareness to the greater message of the gospel. And in this context, it was about forgiveness. Okay, so miracles are meant to meet needs. Miracles can introduce the gospel in unusual ways to people. Also, miracles defy logic, experience, and even natural law that requires us to ask greater spiritual questions. So, after the man gets up, picks up his mat, this is what they said. Uh, This amazed everyone, and they praised God. We have never seen anything like this. So a miracle can just absolutely blow the framework of thinking, you know, away from people because it defies logic. It makes people ask questions, spiritual questions about God and his power. Now, I told you a few moments I quoted from the essay of of David Hume uh, who, you know, uh, started, you know, that, that, that science and miracles, they are incompatible together. But also, probably about, you know, 30, 40 years ago, one of his great advocates, his name, uh, David Hume's advocate, was named Anthony Flew, all right? He's a, he taught at Oxford, Aberdeen University, York University in Toronto. He was, he was a strong advocate of, of atheism and criticized even the meaning of the concept of God, except... When he came across a miracle, okay, 
all of his theolo- all of his academic formation, everything was kind of changed in the moment when he when he when he took what he knew about natural and scientific law, but he cross references with the miraculous. And in 2007, he wrote a book called "There Is God: How the World's Most Notorious Atheist Changes Mind." And the thesis statement is that, and I'm quoting: "I now believe there's a God." Okay, because a, a miracle. A miracle, especially to those that come from a scientific framework, a a miracle makes you ask really great questions and question the verdict that science has rendered that there's no possibility of miracles that could, you know, that could exist. I think, you know, that miracles are an answer to critics of the gospel, skeptics, secular thinking, and deconstructing young adults, all right? They've had decades of godless post-secondary teaching humanistic theology, and we are becoming better. The term is called apologetics. We are becoming better at being able to answer the deep questions of people about faith and those kind of things. But I want to say to you that... Better than apologetics, which is argument versus argument, what about instead we went from argument to miracle? Like how do you, I mean, when there's a miracle there, when there's something unusual there, I mean, it really kind of opens the door of explanation as well. So I want to say today, we need miracles in the church. We need them today. There are people in this world that have needs beyond their capacity to handle themselves. And they need a powerful touch of the Lord. We also need miracles in the church because it introduces the gospel to people in unusual ways. Okay, It also defies logic and makes people ask bigger spiritual questions at all. Jesus said about miracles in this day. He said, very truly I I tell you, whoever believes in me and the works that I have been doing, they will even do greater things because I'm going to my Father. So he didn't say that miracles would decrease scope and number as we get closer to his return. He said, There are going to be greater things that are going to be done in the latter times because I'm going to be interceding and praying for you, okay? All right, so John 6, it's a story of miracles, okay? The series is on miracles. We're going to end up on Easter with a a great miracle there. So the story of the fishes and the loaves. Now, the, the story of the fishes and the loaves is mentioned in every story of the gospel. Some stories don't make the cut in all the gospels. This is one that's in all four, all four versions. So before we get to the story of the fish and the loaves, we got to start that morning, okay, that there's this kid, he's probably 12 or 13, 14, in that annoying kind of age, you know, mom, mom, mom. I, I want to go hear Jesus. I want to go. He's coming today. Mom, can we go? Mom, can we go? Mom, can we go? I've got things to do around here. You know, what do you think? I can just get up and leave the house? No. Mom, please. Mom, 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 mom. Oh, hush. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pack you a lunch, and you just go on your own, okay? So here's this mom. She pulls out her basket, and she puts some barley loaves in the basket and two whole fish. What a terrible lunch. I mean, they're not filleted. They're, it's hot, oily, stinks. Remember, you know, like when you used to open your lunch at school and you had like a bologna sandwich or, or even worse, potted meat? You remember that? What was that? Don't, don't, you don't even want to know. I, I think they've banned it now, and I thank God for it. All right, so he's got some loaves, and he's got two whole fish. And she sends him out for the day 
to be a part of what's going on with Jesus. Now, we're going to start reading John 6. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him. Look at this. Because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Because miracles meet needs, but miracles introduce people to the gospel. It, it defies logic. It opens people's, expands people's thinking when it comes to spiritual things. Because they saw the signs that he had performed by the healing of the sick. All right? Then Jesus went up on a mountainside, sat down with the uh, disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up, he saw a great crowd coming toward him. And he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? <clears throat> he asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one of us to have a bite. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far that will that go among many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. So <clears throat> Jesus and the disciples, they, they have a problem, okay? They have a resource problem. There, is, there are too many people and not enough food. 5,000 men was the only ones that they counted, not the women and children. They didn't even count the one that was going to bring the miracle, all right? Sometimes people don't look and value. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't consider, you know, what others can bring when it comes to a, a, a miracle. So the, the, appro the masses are approaching. The masses of people are coming to hear Jesus with no food and it's getting later in the day. It's so, it's unusual because nobody has any food, okay? Nobody's got anything. That these people, these people are so hungry that they, I mean, they're, they're so hungry for God. They're so hungry to hear what he is saying that, that they're not even paying attention to the normal, you know, like, like food. What are, what are we going, you know, what are we going to eat? You know, you can be so spiritually hungry that you start doing unusual things in your life, okay? When spiritual hunger and, and God starts speaking to you and you start becoming more spiritually aware, you may find yourself doing things that are unusual and abnormal. I mean, there's thousands of people showing up to hear the teachings of Jesus with not even the thought of any kind of taking care of of, of any, you know, any kind of food. But I want to I wanna tell you this morning that there are, there are times in your life that God will start to reveal himself to you. God will start to speak to you, and you will find yourself thinking about God, thinking, you know, even attending church. You'll start sneaking in, you know, attending church. You, you might start opening the Bible. When God starts speaking and he starts revealing a spiritual hunger in your life, you, you might be surprised at what happens in your life. There might even be a day that you do something as crazy as just open your heart up and accept the Lord, okay? These people, they're, they're hungry. They heard, they heard about the miracle. They heard about the teaching. They're, they're not even concerned about their own personal well-being for that day, so they, 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 they approached, and, and Jesus had made the decision that we need to feed them. If we try to send them away, we'll never get them back to hear the gospel. So, so what's the natural answer to this problem? Okay, What is the natural answer to this problem? So they default back to laws of mathematics and laws of supply and demand in their response. Okay, So the first answer is, let's purchase more food. Okay? We got this issue, let's purchase more food. All right, two problems with that, all right? Number one, they don't have enough money to buy food for everyone. They don't have enough money. And then also, even if you had enough money, who's going to be able to provide on short notice 
food for that number of people. There was no tasty pastry around there at that, you know, at that point. So, th- so they, they, they defaulted back. Let's, let's try to buy food. Let's, let's, let's look at money. And all of a sudden, they, don't, <clears throat> they realize that doesn't work. So the, one option was to purchase more food. The other was to see if there was enough on site to share with anyone. They're going, surely everybody's brought a little something and we can just get through this moment. And I just want to ask a question for this little boy. Why was he the only one with a lunch? He's the only one. 5,000 people. 5,000 people. He's the only one. And he's got five little loaves and two fish in a basket, you know, I didn't want to go back to what those fish were probably like, you know. Uh, all right, so, so listen, he, he gives it up, but, but, but their first default was we can solve this. This is a resource problem. This is a money problem. We can handle that. And I, I want to say we always try our best to handle God-sized problems, right? We default back, you know, to what we know. Sometimes we make spiritual conclusions based on what we see with our eyes, all right? We can do this. We, we can figure out a way. But I want you to know that there are things that occur in your life that are beyond your capacity to help or heal. And in those moments, you've got to reach out to the Lord, all right? And he puts us, he puts us in those places, all right? He puts us in those places. So laws of mathematics and supply and demand They're not incorrect in this moment. They're simply telling the truth. And I want to say, too, as we get further in the story, if you're a person that comes from the sciences and mathematics and you deal with equations, the rest of this story is about to blow your mind. I just want you to know that. Okay? So they look at their their resources versus the number, and they make this determination there's going to be a shortage, okay? So sometimes miracles contradict mathematics, but ultimately, they will work out in your favor, okay? So they didn't need different math. They didn't need money. They didn't need more bread. They just needed a miracle in this moment. And I just want to say, I want to say, in your thinking, if you need a miracle, don't limit yourself to the limit, you know, to, to the confines of science and mathematics and physics because there may be a miracle in your future, There may be something that God wants to do. Believe beyond that moment, all right? So, so they are, Jesus takes the loaves, verse 11, and he gives thanks. Another version says he breaks the bread. Several of the versions says he breaks the bread. He took the loaves, he gave thanks, broke the bread. He distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. They thought there was going to be an issue of resource and supply. Look, we'll be lucky if everybody gets a crumb. We'll be lucky, you know, like there are certain parts of a fish I'm not going to eat, but I guess if you're hungry enough, you'll eat it. Give me that eyeball. I'll do it. I'll pop it right in, okay? All right? So this miracle, when he starts to break it, all right, man, not only, not only did everybody get enough, I mean, d- get just a little, they, they got enough. They were filled. And he did the same, he did the same with the fish. So a miracle starts with the acknowledgement of the need and reaching out to God for help. I got, I need a miracle in my life. Jesus took what he had. They tried to do the best that they could, you know, and the first thing he did, he gave thanks But then he broke the bread. He broke it, all right? Miracles sometimes come through our own brokenness, all right? Sometimes miracles come through brokenness. You know, you realize you need a miracle because the circumstance that you're in and you sometimes the the degree of the the urgency of that moment it causes some things to break in our life so for instance i'm just going to give you an example if you've got a child who is chronically sick 
okay? Chronically sick, all right? You are worried. You are broken. Do we have money? Do we have insurance? What's going to happen? There, there causes some breaking on the inside, okay? There's a, a miracle sometimes that comes through brokenness that we would never see or perceive otherwise, okay? All right? So, but when we go through brokenness, we pray more sometimes. We're more spiritually aware. We have greater compassion for people who are going through other types of brokenness because there's a miracle in the breaking sometimes. So there's things, listen to me. There are things that are, God is doing in my heart while I'm standing and believing for a miracle, okay? Something deep and internal. But that, but that miracle, you know, there, there's a blessing that comes from the brokenness. So on this stage a month ago was Dave Reaver. How many of you heard his testimony when, when he was here? It was an unbelievable story. And I was very moved. And I took Dave to the airport. And I was, I was sitting with him. And I just said, Dave, I, I mean, he's not doing well physically. He's having trouble walking and, you know, just got to have some other surgeries in his life. And I just said, Dave, I, I just want you to know I hate what you went through. Like I see the brokenness. I spent, you know, a day or so with him, helping him out of a car, hotel, restaurant, all of that. And I said, I hate, I hate what you went through. I said, but I've just got to believe that somewhere, you know, and, and I, I said, I just, I know that you have been a blessing. You have planted seed in people's lives and hearts and, you know, and, and he just got a little emotional there because he's the one that bore that brokenness. He just said, but to me, it's all worth it if I get to heaven and I've, I've seen that, you know, seen the, the gospel impact that it's had. So sometimes, you know, in the midst of a miracle, there's a breaking as well. God, listen to me. Sometime in the midst of waiting for the miracle, there's something that God's doing on the inside of me. There's some breaking. I'm changing. I'm, God's doing something deeper in my life while I'm, while I'm in that, when I realize I need that miracle and I'm, I'm, I'm standing and I'm, I'm interceding for that. Verse 12. When they had gathered, when they had gathered, when they had all had enough to eat, all right, I mean, there's a lot of food. When they all had enough to eat, all right, these men, you know, they just, they went back for seconds. There's, a, there's, you know how men do. When they all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces of bread, the pieces that are left over. Let there be nothing that is wasted. So they gathered them, filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. So after it's over, after it's over, they're collecting what is left over, okay? So, I just want to make this point to teenagers. Jesus cleaned up, you know, when he got through with things, and you can do the same as well, okay? <laughs> Parents, I just want to help you. I'm just giving you every little tip I can, okay? Do with that what you want, all right? All right? So, they started, they started with such small Everybody was fed, okay, and now they've got 12 baskets. Listen to me. God won't just meet the need. He can give you more than you've ever imagined. You may think that you are short and insufficient on resources, but what you may find out is that you are in the, the, uh, 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 a candidate for a miracle of overflow. 12 baskets, 12 baskets. They ended with more. Than they started with. In their panic, we're, we're going to be short. We don't have enough money. We can't buy food. Now they've got 12 baskets after it's over with. Worship team, you can come. Verse 14. After the people saw the sign that Jesus performed, they begin to say, surely is this the prophet who came into the world. Okay, so again, Miracles meet needs. Miracles introduce, you know, give the platform to introduce the gospel. And they defy logic as well. So these people, surely this is the prophet. Surely, surely this is the prophet. The end of the day, 
The little boy goes home, and the mother says, where is your lunch basket? And he says, Mom, you're not going to believe what happened. These men came and got my lunch, and they prayed over it, Mom, and they fed thousands of people with my little loaves and my little fish that you packed. And she said, boy, I told you about lying. Get in your room. I told you about telling those stories. All right? Just a few days later in the, in the version of Matthew, just a few days later in Matthew's version, Matthew 16, the disciples find themselves hungry again. They're hungry again. What is the answer? All right. Matthew 6, 19, they're all debating, where are we going to get food? And Jesus said to them, don't you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the five thousands and how many basket fills that you gathered? We're talking just days after one of the greatest miracles, you know, in our life. And, man, it has just gone. They're hungry again. They're defaulting back on what, they've, what they already knew. And Jesus said, man, have you, have you already forgotten this great miracle? So I want to say a couple of things this morning that we're going to pray and just believe God this morning, all right? So if you've got a need, you've got an answer. It's not necessarily wrong to try to take care of it, okay? That's kind of human nature. But there comes a point in your life that you've got to realize this is a God issue. This is not something that I can do, okay? And I'm not going to wrestle with it anymore. I'm not going to try to strategize. Lord, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. This is beyond what I can do. The doctor has said this. The job has done this. My finances say this. Lord, this is beyond, this is beyond what I can do. All right? So we surrender and we put ourselves in the need of a miracle. Okay, we're a candidate for a miracle. I'm not the fixer anymore. I'm not trying to work this out. I'm not trying to grab some duct tape and, you know, just try to work my way through it. I'm trying to figure it out myself. I'm a candidate for a miracle. So surrender that to the Lord. Ask the Lord. And then also, I want you to be mindful of what God has done to you, for you in the past, all right? We're a couple of weeks away from one of the greatest miracles. They were the ones that were, that were uh, distributing the miracle loaves. And within a few weeks, they're hungry and they're grumbling again. Where are we going to get food? I want you to remember what God has done for you because what the miracles he's done in the past is the seed that God has placed in the heart for a miracle he's going to do in the future. So remember that. Remember that. In a moment, we're going to sing. I'm going to open this altar up because we're going to pray and believe for miracles. We're just, I don't know what's on your heart. I don't know what you need. I don't know what the need is. And you may ask, you know, why do we do this? You know, why do we do this? You know why? I do this regularly on Sunday. Because I never know when it's someone's miracle moment. I never know when it's the moment that, that God says, God's sovereignty and your faith and my timing are aligning together. And today is a day for your miracle. Okay? Now I want to say, we believe in a God of miracles. Okay? We are not cessationists that think that it's part of a bygone era. We believe that God can move sovereign today and can touch every life, every heart, and give a miracle as he see fits. We are ones that respect science. We have so many PhDs in this room, you know, like, you know, and some of them, you know, they're, they're people of faith, so they're, they're not disagreeing with what I'm saying, all right? But also, we're thankful for science. We're thankful for medical science. But it only just gives a conclusion you know, of, of, of scientific fact, but we believe that a miracle is beyond that. It's a temporary violation and suspension of that as well. So we're going to pray. We're going to believe that God 
is going to do more than we ask or think this morning. So would you please stand? Would you stand this morning? Michaela, I want you, we're going to sing a song for a moment. Then I'm going to open this song. I want you to prepare your heart. I want there to be faith in this place. If that's you, if you're in need of a miracle this morning, I'm going to give you a moment. We're going to pray with you this morning. Worship team, let's, let's sing for a moment. And you're the God of healing, restoration power. Nothing is too hard for the working hand of God. Come release your healing. I know you are willing. Nothing is too hard for the This morning, sing it out this morning. So we're going to do miracle prayer this morning. So if you need to stand in for a miracle, what it may be, whatever it may be, would you just come stand across the front? You got a need in your life? We're going to pray miracle prayers this morning. We're going to stand with you. We're going to believe whatever it is. Whatever it is, okay? Whatever it is, would you come? Would you stand across the front? We're going to do miracle prayer this morning. We're going to do a miracle prayer this morning, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. Oh, God. Hey, today could be your day. You just never know. Just come across. Come on up. Stand across. We're going to ask God for a miracle this morning. We're going to ask God for a miracle this morning, Lord. So, Lord, we stand on the promise of Psalms 144, and we just pray for an open heaven this morning, Lord. We pray, Lord, the releasing of your glory and power in our life. God, we pray as we stand and believe for a miracle today that there will be healings, salvation, deliverance, blessings. And I want to say, Lord, by your stripes we are healed. We tie what is about to happen, Lord, with the suffering that you did on the cross. Lord, by your stripes we are healed. We stand in agreement today, Lord. We stand in that belief that what was meant for the destruction of the body, Lord, you are going to bring healing and the miraculous. So we don't know anything else to do today. 
But just stand and believe. If you're part of our prayer team, would you just move out and start moving amongst people today, praying over them, praying with them today. This is your moment to declare your faith before the Lord, your belief. What is the miracle that you need? They knew they had a problem. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we stand based on your word. Lord, science has already spoken. But Lord, we're asking you to do something beyond that, Lord. Something beyond that. Lord, we stand, Lord, and we believe in a miracle-working God. Lord, a God that, that does the impossible. You're, you're the one that told us to speak to a mountain, to be removed. And Lord, we're doing that today. I pray, I pray the prayer of healing this morning for those that need physical healing in their life. God, I pray, I pray, if that's you, I pray today, by your stripes we are healed, we pray. Prayers of healing this morning, healing of the body, we pray over that. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, we pray. We pray that by your stripes we're healed. If that's you, if you need a physical healing today, stand. Lord, we pray for the touch of God upon the body. God, from the top of the head to the sole of the feet. God, I pray. I pray that today. I pray. I pray. I pray healing. Prayer of healing this morning. Prayer of healing this morning. Thank you, Lord. I pray for those that need a miracle in their mind, heart, and emotions today. Fear, anxiety, depression. I pray over that today. I pray over that today. I pray for a miracle today. I pray for a miracle today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Come on, speak his name out this morning. Every dark addiction starts to Speak his name this morning. Thank you, Lord. Come on, speak. keep praying. Let's keep praying. There's a spirit of faith in this place today. There's a spirit of faith. Let that spirit of intercession just touch your heart this morning. Let that faith arrive. Man, start declaring that. Start declaring it prophetically. Lord, I see this. Lord, I see this. Lord, I'm standing. Lord, I'm standing. Lord, we prayed for those for physical healing, the mind, heart, and body. We pray for those that have need miracles of resource miracles of resource Lord meet that need meet that need Lord those need deliverance in their heart God I pray whatever miracle today Lord we don't serve a lifeless God we serve the living God today thank you Lord 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 so we contend today we pray we wrestle today we wrestle today Lord we pray over that miraculous working Lord we pray we pray today we pray today thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord now listen until that miracle comes we're just going to keep worshiping. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep believing, okay? Because I never know when it's my day. I never know when it's my day. So we're going to keep standing. We keep praying. We don't get discouraged when days come off the calendar. We hold our faith high. We are connected with the, the, the cross of Jesus, all right? And we're just going to keep worshiping. We're just going to keep praying. We're going to keep believing. Come on, we're going to fight our battles in worship this morning. All right? We're going to fight our battles this morning. We're going to do all that we can. We're going to give it to God. We're going to give it to God. We're going to give it to God. Come on, son. Come on, sing it. Sing it this morning. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I.
Come on, sing it. Sing it this morning. All right, so we're going to sing that in just a moment. We're going to sing it again. But right now, I want to do miracle worship. We're going to praise God. We're going to praise Him for His mighty acts. We're going to praise Him that He is the God of miracles. And in the midst of this, we're going to pray. and We're going to say, Lord, I, I'm not, my faith is not going to bend. I'm not going to be discouraged because you're a God of miracles. And I'm going to keep worshiping you. I'm going to keep praising you regardless of what I see with my eye or experience in the, in the moment. I'm going to keep my, my eyes on you and my faith on you. So we're going to do some miracle worship right now. Ready? Across the building, I want you to praise him. If you're standing in the need of a miracle, this is your moment to do some worship this morning. Just to thank God. Just to make your declaration through worship. I'm not moved by the circumstance of the moment. But Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you. Lord, you're going to work this out some way. God, we pray. We pray. We pray. Come on, fill this place. Let's worship. Let's declare. Let's stand this morning. We praise you, Lord. We praise you this moment. This morning, Lord. We praise you. We praise you this morning. We may not see anything moving. We may not see anything changing in the moment. Oh, God, but we praise you this morning because you're a God of miracles. You're a God that has my best intentions at heart. You're a God that loves and that cares and that you are unchanging. And we praise you. We praise you this morning. We praise you this morning. We praise you this morning, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. All right, worship team, let's hit it. Let's fight our battles again. Thank you, Lord. This is how I fight Sing my it. Battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my
Give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're good to us. You're good to us. You're good to us. Now listen, over the next few weeks, we're going to be focusing on miracles. We're going to be praying for faith, gift of miracles, gift of faith. We're going to believe God's going to operate in your life. So this isn't one and done. This is a season that we're coming in up to Easter, the ultimate miracle. So I want you praying. I want you believing. I want you interceding. I want you to be mindful. And you're probably already doing that. But we're just going to believe God. We're going to see God move on behalf, you know, and, and with needs in our lives.